Good morning. My pleasure this morning to read the announcements. Welcome to Maryvale and Fallowfield United Church. We hope you enjoy today's service and find comfort as we worship together to explore, explore our relationship with God. Both churches meet together now, alternating every two weeks between the two churches. This week and next week we'll be at Maryvale, followed by two weeks then at Fallowfield. For more information, including where to make donations, both churches can easily be found on the internet under Maryvale Fallowfield Church. As a caring pastoral charge, we support several organizations in the city. Some of these are the Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, Ottawa Mission, and the Barhaven Food Cupboard. A list of these community services are also on our website. We welcome Reverend Sandra back from holidays tomorrow, and we trust she's had a wonderful holiday. In the meantime, please contact Judy Lancaster if you need assistance. The meditation group meets on Thursdays at 10 a.m. at Maryville Church. Book Club. Please note there was no meeting in February. However, the Book Club will be discussing two books on March the 5th at 10 a.m. at the Fallowfield Church. The books are Homecoming by Kate Morton and Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. Everyone is welcome to join the Book Club. Annual committee reports for 2023 are now due. Please get them in as soon as possible to Judy Lancaster, and thank everyone who contributes to the operation of our churches. The Needs Committee met this week and reviewed the initial results of the surveys. There is still time to complete either the Fallowfield or the Maryville online survey, and the Needs Committee would like to receive a broad range of views from as many members as possible. Both churches are at a bit of crossroads, and your input will be invaluable. Fortunately, thanks to the Hope Estate, we do have financial resources to plan and build a bright future for our churches. Hope you have a great week. God bless everyone. Good morning. Lighting the Peace Candle. We light the Christ candle in honor of our tradition and one who illuminates the way for us. The sacred light of this candle guides us along the path of mystery and wonder. May this light burn in our hearts and be for us a reminder of God's love. Amen.
please join me for our opening prayer. God of love, we ask that you will help us to find a time for rest during this sacred time of worship. Let us come to worship knowing that this is a safe time for leaving our cares, our fears, and our anxieties with you. This is a time when we can find refuge in your Holy Spirit. It is a time when Jesus tells us, you long to gather us under your wings like a mother hen gathers her chicks. We know that this is a thin time, a mystical time, and a time for holy experience. With our souls at peace, help us to open ourselves to your presence within us and around us. And hear us now, O God, and fill us with faith, hope, and passion as we say the ancient prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God.
Our scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O oh God. Amen. There is something about change that is certainly difficult. There is a leaving behind what was once helpful and useful for that moment and then trying on something new. Right now, currently in history, the church and our faith tradition is changing rapidly. I believe the Spirit is on a mission to draw us to walk forward. The Spirit is calling us to embrace the mission of change and to have the courage to walk into the future, not really knowing where it will lead us. The story of Peter walking on water is so familiar to many of us. It holds so many images that pull at our imagination. One image we can picture is that of Peter being hesitant to put his trust in Jesus as Jesus encourages him to get out of the box, or in this case the boat, and to trust that God will hold him up during the changing times. Now in our story, early in the morning, Jesus comes down from the mountain where he spent the night meditating and praying. And he immediately heads out towards the disciples' boat. He doesn't take his own boat, but starts walking on the Sea of Galilee. And he soon spots the disciples, and he can tell from their demeanor that they have had a harrowing night. Of course, when the disciples see Jesus walking towards them, they're scared out of their wits, and they cry out in terror that it is a ghost 
Jesus being Jesus was quick to comfort them. Take courage, he says, it's me. Don't be afraid. Now Peter, the impulsive and headstrong disciple, who often speaks before he thinks, suddenly decides he wants to walk on water as well and calls to Jesus to let him perform this magic trick. Our scriptures repeatedly tell us that Peter is weak in the flesh and at times his weakness takes over and causes him to do things he later regrets. And of course, true to form, when Jesus says, come ahead out, Peter jumps out of the boat and heads towards Jesus walking on the water. But here's the thing. He takes his eyes off of Jesus and he looks down at the rough waves churning beneath his feet and he loses his nerve and he starts to sink. And of course, Peter starts crying out to Jesus for help and without a moment's hesitation, Jesus reaches out and holds Peter up. Jesus then rebukes Peter for letting his emotions rule instead of having faith in God. But here's what struck me about Peter when I read the scripture. He is the only one who had the courage to get out of the boat and take a risk. None of the other disciples did. Peter was the only one who was willing to try and embrace the new way of being that Jesus was offering. There is something so appealing about Peter, isn't there? He is brash, passionate, always rushing into things saying what others are only thinking, and doing what others dare not do. Peter seems to be the favorite one of Jesus. He is, after all, Peter the Rock, whom Jesus chose to build his church upon. Is it because Peter, even though he bumbles and stumbles, is not afraid to embrace change? He is the disciple who always takes risks, makes great leaps of faith, and even though he may start to sing, he always picks himself up, brushes himself off, and tries again and again and again. We love Peter because he is so much like all of us. He is full of faith one minute, full of bravado, ready to face the changes that are coming his way. And then he gets scared and full of doubt the next minute because he doesn't know what is going to happen to his beloved church and treasure the tradition. Jesus is always encouraging the disciples toward taking risks because God has their backs. Go ahead and try, he says, because God wants to gather you under God's wings and walk forward with you like a mother hen walks forward with her chicks. Jesus tells us not to get stuck in the past, to trust the Spirit on this, mission of change. Jesus was always encouraging initiative by calling his followers to step out of the boat. He tells Peter to focus on him, to focus on Jesus and on the author of truth and not to worry about the outcome, leave the outcome up to God. Now back in the days of Jesus, the disciples were expected to do what they would see their rabbi doing. And Peter would have seen Jesus having total faith and trust in God, regardless of what was going on around him. Jesus knows the reason Peter couldn't walk on water was because Peter didn't believe in himself. But Jesus believed in Peter. Jesus believed he could walk on water. When Jesus calls us out of the boat, it is because he knows we can do it. He has faith in us. He also knows that God will give us the strength and courage to live out our faith tradition in a world that is rapidly changing. When Jesus walked on water, he's telling us that he came to birth a new awareness of God. It is an awareness that will always bring about a greater depth of faith. When Jesus walks on water, he is expanding the kingdom of God for us. And he is calling us to get out of the boat and to trust in God and to take risks. Then, he says, our faith will deepen and grow. Amen.
Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time of worship, a time where we were able to come together in this sacred hour and share our faith with others, others who walk the same journey that we do. Thank you for your love that you have revealed to us today through scripture, music, and reflection. At this time, we pray for all the teachings that you've sown into our hearts. We pray that you will help us to remember them always and that they may take root deep down in our souls and produce a commitment to honor the commandment to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, as well as our neighbor. As we leave this sacred time, we are grateful that your spirit will guide us during the week to come. May we be aware of your love that helps us to take the teachings of Jesus into the world so others may see your love and compassion. And we know that the problems of our world seem so overwhelming. And so we pray now for the power to be gentle, the strength to be forgiving, the patience to be understanding, and the endurance to accept the consequences of holding on to what we believe to be right. May we put our trust in the power of good to overcome evil and the power of love to overcome hatred. And now we ask that you hear our own individual heart prayers that we raise to you in a moment of silence. Almighty God, creator and redeemer, help us to take this worship into the world and may we carry your love in our hearts always. Amen. Let us go now from this worship in the love and the goodness of our God. Let us embrace God's renewing energy for the coming week as we act out the teachings of Jesus in our world. And may the Holy Spirit guide us and bless us always. Amen.